This video discusses an interplay between the Laplace transform the Fourier transform and the Fourier series. So assuming that we have a very generic set that we call as the Laplace set or the Laplace transform. So within this set we have a subset which is Fourier transform. And within that, we have Fourier series. Usually, we combine these two together and we call them as Fourier analysis. So, the question arises that why do we have all of these transformations? Why don't we have simply one transformation? So, to address that, we have to look into what is the signal in time domain that we need to analyze or we need to take an alternate look in the frequency domain. So, let us look into the set of constraints for each one of them. So, for the Fourier series, so these constraints are that the signal x of t, this has to be periodic. So this is our first constraint. If it is not periodic, then we cannot apply Fourier series. Moreover, x of t must follow Dirichlet conditions. We will come back to these conditions, but one out of these three conditions depend on the convergence of a given signal that is x of t. Right and plus there are some more properties. So these two have to be satisfied in order for us to do the Fourier analysis by means of Fourier series. So next coming to the Fourier transform aspect. In this the first condition number one this is relaxed. That is it is valid for both periodic and aperiodic signals. However, number two, that is x of t should follow these Dirichlet conditions. This is still valid. So this means that x of t must be converging. Signal in order for us to form the Fourier transform of it. So lastly, we have the Laplace transform. So the first condition over here is relaxed that is it is valid for both periodic and aperiodic signal and moreover the second condition that specifically of convergence this is kind of relaxed though by means of region of convergence of the Laplace transform. So we can say that Laplace transform has a special case in Fourier transform and Fourier transform has a special case in Fourier series. So this is our most general case or transform. If Laplace transform is so much powerful then why do we need to go to the Fourier transform and Fourier series since these were constraints over here. So what are the benefits of moving from Laplace to the Fourier series? So let us discuss about that by means of some mathematics. So we have again the Laplace transform and we know that x of t, this has a Laplace transform which is x of s and this is equivalent to an integration from minus infinity to infinity x of t e minus s t dt where we have said that s is simply equal to sigma plus j omega. Now if we move to Fourier transform so over here x of t again has a transform which is x of j omega that is in the Fourier transform the real part of this signal s is removed. So we basically set s equal to j omega. 
and we consider sigma that is the real part equal to zero this is the only difference so our integration becomes minus infinity to infinity x of t e minus j omega t dt so this notation is often referred to as simply x of omega as well and lastly we have Fourier series so let us write the expression of it that is the analysis expression of the Fourier series before delving into the benefits of why we need the Fourier series so we have an ak which are not, nothing but the amplitudes at a particular value of k i'll come back to this again and this is equivalent to 1 by t we have a time period t x of t e minus and from here we have simply minus j this uh, subscript k omega naught t dt so let us visualize what is this analysis expression and what does it signify, uh, signify so say we have a signal x of t and we take the Fourier transform of it so in the frequency domain we would have magnitude plot that is x of j omega and then the phase plot that is x of j omega so say this signal is a human speech signal which is valid between say 100 hertz to roughly around 4 kilohertz so in this case we would have a spectrum like this that is the magnitude response would identify the strength or simply power of a signal at a particular value of frequency but note that this is continuous in the frequency domain that is f so we have used omega here so let's make it consistent so this would be a mega as well similarly for the same range 100 hertz to 4 kilohertz so this plot would indicate what would be the relevant phase shifts for example between pi by 2 to minus pi by 2 we could have a plot like that so at 4 kilohertz the frequencies at 4 kilohertz as a phase shift of minus pi by 2 but importantly you can observe that the omega axis that is the frequency axis is continuous and this marks the main difference between uh, the Fourier transform and the Fourier series that is in Fourier series we would have omega which is discrete rather than continuous for example if we are given with the periodic signal which is x of t so in that case the magnitude response that is the absolute value of ak so this would be discrete in frequency over here we have an angular frequency so we would have a fundamental frequency which is omega naught and the multiples of this fundamental frequency which could be 2 omega naught 3 omega naught and so on so all of these are called harmonics so the subscript k is mentioned over here that is 2 or 3 and that subscript is being multiplied with omega naught over here so we need to know the fundamental frequency and from there we would have some harmonics if any so just as a recap what is the fundamental frequency to so say if we are given with a periodic signal which is simply a square wave and the fundamental time period that is the time period after which it is repeating that is t naught is simply say one 
so our fundamental angular frequency omega naught in radians per second is simply omega naught which is 2 pi by t naught and since t naught is simply 1 so this is 2 pi so for this signal the fundamental frequency is 2 pi so hence this would be simply 2 pi and this would be 4 pi 6 pi and onwards so at 0 radians per second that is when a is 0 or when we set k equal to 0 and we obtain a 0 so this is something that we call as the dc value or the average value of a signal so for example in this case the average value uh, you can take the average you can see that this is cancelling with this one and similarly this would cancel with this one so average value is zero so directly by inspection we can say that this is zero but for a1 a2 a3 and onwards you would have to calculate by means of this analysis expression mentioned over here so this was our magnitude response similarly we can have the phase response that is in terms of ak and again this would be in discrete so we would have 2 pi that is omega naught 4 pi 6 pi and so on and these are our harmonics the second harmonic and so on so this is uh, the first major advantage that we have in uh, that is the value of axis that is frequency is now discrete rather than continuous but more importantly using Fourier series we can say that if the Fourier series follows uh, the Dirichlet conditions mentioned over here then we can express the signal x of t in time itself in a synthesized form that is we can break down different frequencies and if we add them together we will get back our x of t for example in this case we would have a summation and this summation would have a k as a coefficient and the summation coefficient is k minus infinity to infinity times e j k omega naught t so this summation form is something that we call as the synthesis expression and this is our analysis equation synthesis because we are synthesizing the signal x of t into weighted sum of exponentials we have exponentials here they have certain weight and then we are summing them up so we have weighted sum of complex exponentials representation in the Fourier series so coming back to the Fourier transform so in Fourier transform we have several properties which are more useful as compared to the Laplace transform for example we have a duality property where we have diagonal relationships between time and frequency and lastly for the Laplace transform so we may have a signal x of t which is not converging by itself but we multiply with another signal which is e minus sigma t and we set sigma so that this converges and after that we take the Fourier transform of it so the Laplace transform exists for even those signals for which the Fourier transform does not exist and hence it is more generic in nature so in this video we have started discussing the three methods of transform the plus Fourier and Fourier series whereby we have merged the Fourier transform and Fourier series in one umbrella of Fourier analysis so in Fourier analysis we have Dirichlet conditions as mentioned before and convergence is the first condition of the three conditions so let us now look into the three conditions for the convergence of Fourier series 
note that for a series is for periodic signals so whatever these duration conditions are for fourier series they would also hold for fourier transforms but over there the condition of periodicity would be relaxed so the first condition states that over any period x of t must be absolutely integrable so over here we have a time period t this is the absolute value of our uh, signal x of t and in this period it must be integrable otherwise the Fourier series will not hold so in the failure analysis the signal x of t mentioned over here is simply 1 by t and the time period is 0 to t and less than 1 and then it is repeating but note that as t tends to 0 so this value goes to infinity so note that this is still a periodic signal but the first Dirichlet condition is not satisfied so hence we cannot have a convergent Fourier series for this signal so let us move to the second condition the second condition states that in any finite interval of time x of t is of bounded variations that is there is no more than a finite number of maxima and minima during a single period of the signal so the signal represented over here is again periodic and it is repeating after a certain time interval and that is defined by zero less than t and it is terminating over here but at the same time as we move towards left the number of oscillations increase by reaching zero the number of oscillations would have reached infinity so we have so we would have infinite number of maxima and minima and for this time period presently this signal is simply sine 2 pi by t so when t has a smaller value the oscillations are increasing so hence for these kind of signals which are periodic by nature we cannot synthesize them into Fourier series lastly the third condition states that in any finite interval of time there are only a finite number of discontinuities so you cannot have infinite number of discontinuities otherwise Fourier series representation would not be valid for example the signal x of t over here this has infinite number of discontinuities for example between 0 to 8 the signal if we divide time by 2 that is at 4 the amplitude is also divided by 2 so we get 1 by 2 so next between 4 to 8 now again if we divide by 2 that is at the value of 6 so we have 1 by 4 next we would have a value at 7 which is appearing over here and we would have continuous segregations in between these points and you would have the discontinuities which are of infinite nature so though the signal is periodic but it cannot be represented by means of Fourier series so there you have it the interplay between the Fourier series the Fourier transform and the Laplace transform where we have discussed about the magnitude spectra and also the phase spectra note that the magnitude spectra and the phase spectra combined together is simply called the spectra and this was right sided spectra you have the continuation on the left side as well an example of which is shown in this new figure specifically in the next video we would be looking into the synthesis and the analysis expression of the Fourier series and how we can decompose a periodic signal by means of simple sinusoids as expressed in this animation